the Thor Ragnarok. How Jesus. did this get here? Wow. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Take, take away TT and how everybody was overrating this film. That's how it got No, yeah. no. Because Black Panther is way superior to this. True. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll give true. you that. Yeah, that's true. I'll give you that. Well, I mean, look. Is, no, I'm saying, like, this is, like, the thing is with this movie, right, that's really frustrating, is that this is supposed to be the worst experience to ever happen to Thor in his life. Mm. Right. Like, things are bad. He is kidnapped. Odin is dead. Asgard is getting wrecked and destroyed. Hela is coming. Things are no good. And the movie is just like, yeah, I, 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 know, I know you're supposed to be a little bit sad right now, but what about these jokes? Yeah, and give us like, Jeff Goldblum. And... <laughs> yeah, and I, it's like, and I get that you, I get it that this Taika Waititi style and all of that stuff, but it's just to take something that is as hectic a storyline as Ragnarok, to take something like the end of Ragnarok and just decide, eh, no, it's, just, it's, it's funny. Like, the only guy who took it seriously was um, Heimdall, Idris Elba. Who's miscast mm-hmm. anyway in the MCU? But yeah. anyway, uh, I'm just saying he's the only one who took it seriously. And like, as soon as he took it seriously, he died. Like he had one, two lines where he was like, "This is the end of the fate of Asgard," and they cut him in half afterwards. Um, I just wanted to say that with Thor, it was tricky if you think about it because um, what's this one? The one that so. the one that came before was a dud. And the first one, I think, f- was a bit too serious. It was mediocre at no. best. Yeah, people were still no, figuring was, themselves. I don't know. Out. I thought it was a good. I don't know. I think it was a good movie. I'll say Thor one was a good movie because I no, think it the thing wasn't is. Bad. But I'm oh, saying yeah, like it wasn't like bad. it was. But I'm saying like when I look at it, it was comparable. Well, for me, I'm speaking for myself. For me, it was comparable to Iron Man one and Captain America: The First Avenger. Like I. Okay, Captain I really, America. I'll agree with that. Yeah. I really, I really enjoyed like the characterization of Thor because I think the second one had good characterization of Thor, but it lacked focus as a movie. That's why it was a dud. I think they forgot about the main villain Malekith, and they kind of started doing the Loki thing again, but they didn't balance it properly. But like you can see, even with Thor, um, the Dark World, that scene between Loki and Thingy after Frigga dies, when they're like arguing on the ship or whatever. Like, that was a really good scene. But the thing is, is that now, with the movie, we didn't have focus on who was who. Like, we don't know who Malekith is. That's kind of why I think that movie was a dud, because it just lacked... Fo- like, it had good uh, scenes, but or as a whole, some of its whole parts kind of just brought the whole movie down. So, they want to switch lanes here. They want to go to something weird. They want to make Thor a dude, bro. And I just think that they missed the point of Thor as a character. And like yeah, this, look, unless, it, it unless... was successful. I get it. But Thor's character suffered for this. It only got sort of retconned when we got to Infinity War. Right. But Thor as a character did not do well after this. Yeah. Okay. They gave... Um, I, um, I agree with a lot of that. I think the problem is... Thor Ragnarok was a movie of the moment. Like, I think we yeah. all were kind of, I think, I don't want to say oversaturated, but there was a lot of, like, seriousness, and they were like, you know what, let's cool things down, and they went way too far. So I think when you watch this the first time, because you've watched all the other ones, it kind of feels like a refreshing break, but if you watch it a second time, it's not as, it's nowhere near as good. It's a movie you watch a, once. Yeah. Exactly. Once you watch it a second time, and those jokes aren't as shocking anymore. It's almost a terrible movie. Um, that's my opinion. Which is why I think that the Thor movie after this one is so bad. Because it was the equivalent of watching the first movie twice. Right. That's right. why I think everyone's like, oh. That's my personal opinion. Especially in terms of filmmaking technique. And in terms of um, rising and dropping action in filmmaking. Yeah. And also, it's just I, I just think it was like unnecessary humor when it was not needed. Like, they were laughing when he was by Surtur. They were laughing when Surtur came out the ground and he was defeating Hela or whatever. They, like, the Warriors 3 just get pushed to the side. They just die. They just yeah. die like, like they it's nothing. They like don't do nothing. anything. Yeah, and, but- yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I just think like this, like this, this movie. I think it just it, 
it took what it took it crystallized the worst parts of the MCU. And I think at the time it was just it felt refreshing because the MCU was trying to be so serious, but they forgot that like this is not the character you do this with. This like, movie this movie should have just been a Planet Hulk film with Thor in it. it you know, I th- I don't even think that would have worked. It should have been what Ragnarok is. It should have been like um what this it should have been like uh, Hela is this big imposing force. She should have been a mini Thanos, basically, to Asgard. Yeah, basically, this, then that should have been two movies. The, the Ragnarok you're talking about, I agree. But for Hulk, this should have just been Planet Hulk. Because you can tell they stole from Planet Hulk and they incorporated... Well, they can't movie. really do Planet Hulk like that. And I, I think because the Universal I think, the still rights. owns the rights or whatever. There's yeah. a way for them to do Planet Hulk really convincingly and easily if they you know if they like thought about it something mm. yeah if they thought about it but like i i think the thing is is that like this thing it was just supposed to be it like this was uh, and i know people love to say this but this was supposed to be like the dark knight for thor if you really think about it if you've read the comic books if you know this character like this was supposed to be and the next movie that came after love and thunder that was supposed to be like where you get a really deep introspective look at Thor because in the comic books you get to see three versions of him. You get to see regular Thor, you get to see young Thor, and you get to see old Thor when everybody is dead in Asgard or whatever, and he's just like the last defense of Asgard. And like Gore, like Gore spends all three of those timelines torturing Thor. It's like one of his biggest shames that he ever got tortured by this guy or whatever the case is. And it was like big moments of vulnerability. So these two movies taking that material and just deciding we're going to crack jokes with it. It was just like, you guys just don't care about the material or the character. And I mean, Taika even came out and said, I'll ruin your lore. And I was just like, but then why did you take the job? But anyway. Mm. So Rob, you want to say something? Um, I was going to say in terms of, okay, I don't know much about the comic book stuff. But in terms of like, um, I think there's a flow of rising and then anticlimactic action that kind of happens with this movie. Where it's like a rise, anticlimactic, and then it kind of like breaks your momentum and filmmaking techniques as it builds up. There are some good things to it, like um, mm-hmm. in terms of, um, like you said about building up of the bad guy, but again, it gets undermined. I think Hella smashing Thor's hammer is a great build up for a bad guy in gen- in terms of general filmmaking. Again, I don't know the comic book law, so I don't know how nonsense that was, but it was a lot. It was shocking. Do you know what I mean? For people who don't know what they were talking about. Um, but again, with the whole undermining of your own premise that kind of happens in this movie, there were things that weren't set up by the end. And in a way, you almost don't take the movie seriously as it happens. And what's crazy about this movie is, um, did you know that City of God isn't on this list? Could, did you know that? Yeah, I know it's not on this City list. City of God isn't on this movie, isn't on which this is, list. Which is but weird. Paul Ragnarok is. Right. That's crazy. Right. Um, but anyway, uh, just another famous. just another side note about Ragnarok, quick, quick, yeah. also. Like one of the most anticlimactic things that I think will really, really hurt the momentum of the movie is the way they kill off Odin. Because they don't really address it. Yeah. He just yeah, disappears sort of, in a cloud. Sort of, and yeah, he then he's like, Loki, this is your fault. And then basically Hella lands, and then they just forget that Odin died. They made, him, they made like, him a Jedi. Like, that is just a Jedi death right there. Yeah. Like, Less than a Jedi death, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, yeah. Um, my favorite moment is probably the moment with the brothers. There's a, just a quick one-liner, but I thought it was pretty deep, especially with Loki's acting. Great reaction shot. Where um, Thor is like, what does he say again? Like, I don't take you that seriously anymore. And then, like, Loki gets affected by that. I thought that was a nice little moment in a two-hour movie. Oh, where, he, that... where he's like, I'm going to, when I, yeah, yeah. Oh, in the elevator before it's like, Yes, in the elevator, help. yes. thought that was really funny. thought that was great. Well, not funny, but that was really, see, good yeah, moment. Because I think that's the thing about, like, I think, I think that's the thing about Chris Hemsworth. Like, he can give you, like, he's actually a really good actor. Like, a lot of people see the muscles. And they like the guy is actually a really good actor. Like if you if you look at Dark World, right? What he's doing with Thor in that movie is vastly different from what he was doing with Thor in Thor One and all of that stuff. Like you could see this was like a character progression and a maturity. It's just that it's sad that the movie flopped. 
But, um, yeah, you, you get to see, like, if you give this guy some material to cut his teeth into, he can really give you, like, Thor as a three-dimensional character. But Taika was just not interested in telling that type of story. At all. Mm, I hear you. Um, Rob, any last thoughts? Um, yeah, get this off the list completely. Put City of oh, God yeah. at the top. But, yeah, your turn. Thanks. All right. No, um, I, I agree with everything you guys said, actually. For me, even from my first viewing, I was like, why is everybody raving about this? There's, there's not, especially like the middle, the middle section. All of Hela's scenes out of the moment where he was fighting, where she was fighting Thor, there's nothing there. Listening to Carl, uh, Carl Urban and her talk for me was like, what am I watching? <laughs> you know, honestly speaking, for me, it was, yes, uh, obviously it was Hulk, Valka, Valka, um, Thor, and Loki that really carry the film. But apart from that, there's not much for me to really rave about in this film. I like those moments where I felt like I was watching Planet Hulk because I, re- I read the comics and I watched the animated film. But apart from that, no, this is not, this is not it for me. <laughs> so... This is actually the first time we say a movie is, should not be on the list, and it's the first time we all agree that it shouldn't be. On the list. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. 